You know, one of the more interesting problems we grapple with is not just how to deal with individual robots and humans, but how to think of them on another scale, to have a shift in perspective so that we're actually thinking about the humans as a group and the robots as a group. And we're teaching the robots to think of themselves as a group. You've got trained humans and less trained humans and untrained humans, right? And they all are going to behave differently around these autonomous systems. And so to me, it's a really fascinating case of like really trying to put these people and robots together to do good work, right? And that is a major challenge. That is an unsolved problem. It's an uns it is definitely an unsolved problem. It is so yeah. unsolved. <laughs> yeah. I'm Leila Takayama, and I'm a human-robot interaction researcher. I'm Chris Nicholson, and I lead a team of reinforcement learning scientists and software engineers at an AI company called Pathway. You know, a lot of the wider conversation about this poses kind of a false dichotomy. It's either machines or it's humans, when really the machines are an extension of us. They are a force multiplier. Right? They simply allow us to do more work, get more done, and per hopefully produce surpluses for society. So that's the larger vision. Robots need a lot of help. You know, sometimes yep. humans need help, but robots need a lot of help. Because they can't deal with every single possible environment that we stick them in. They're not going to know all the SKUs that are going to be on those shelves, right? They're going to need to learn over time. It's like learning on the job. And that takes mentorship. I mean, as you know, there's so much excitement about autonomous vehicles these days, right? Cars. I'm a lot more excited about robots getting out in the human populated world. So maybe even on a sidewalk, which is a little crazy, right? Because the rules of the road are much more well-defined than the rules of the sidewalk. I totally agree with that. When I think about autonomous vehicles, I think one of the hardest problems to solve is what I call the parking lot problem. Because a parking lot is the place where you have the densest interaction of social signals. We've just started this new research project where we're trying to get robots to navigate through crowds of people. And you can model the heck out of human crowds, right? And try to predict how your robot should navigate through those bodies of people. But when you actually put a robot in a crowd, what really happens is it gets surrounded and everyone wants to take selfies with it or they want to kick it. We are very reactive <laughs> to seeing these things in our spaces, especially when they're new. At some point, they're not going to be novel, right? They're going to be a little more mundane and that would actually be a good thing, right? Because we're just trying to get work done. These are not entertainment robots and figuring out how to make them more invisible in use, more mundane, more boring, more unremarkable, that would be great. And also, I think the form factor of the robots themselves uh, will have a big impact on how people perceive them, right? Does it look like a cone with wheels that was sent by the police department to surveil us, right? Or does it look like somebody who might answer questions if we have them? Yeah, that, that social and cultural context matters so much, right? And what kind of authority does the robot inherit, right? All those things convey information to the end users who haven't necessarily been involved. Um, and deciding whether or not they want that robot in their space. There's an interesting thing just going on with the Roomba, mm -hmm. where they're really small and low. And if you know much about like relating to livestock or wild animals, you know that like one way to signal that you're safe is to lay down on the ground. Don't be large. So, so some of these low flying or low rolling robots are already successfully, especially Roombas, right? Successfully conveying I'm safe. And what's been really interesting is seeing people dislike the newer ones. Because the old ones that just bumbled around had more personality, but now that they're doing this much, you know, cleaner, more rigid motion, we're attributing a different personality to them. It's the irony mm -hmm. of optimization. You thought you, thought right. you wanted to optimize for speed and efficiency and you ended up like making them less friendly in a way because they're no oh, longer perceived as vulnerable. That's interesting. And it gets, it actually gets back. We see that in software development too. Like if you answer a seemingly hard question too quickly, it raises mm -hmm. suspicions. Right. With software. Oh, interesting. So, so right. it can actually be helpful to sandbag a response by a few seconds so that people <laughs> have the perception that you had to think about it. That's brilliant. Actually, yes. Yeah, so the phone bots too, right? And um, now there's these little like doo -doo 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 sounds that they'll play um, when the phone bot is trying to come up with an answer for you about, say, the flight that you're trying to rebook. And it, it's because it's like trying, it's trying really hard to help you, right? <laughs> and that effort needs to be communicated. 
you have to stand on the shoulders of giants to get anywhere in this field, right? It's pretty much impossible for any single person to do everything. And so I think open source has a critical role to play in just learning as a society and as an industry. We're aiming for something hybrid. We're aiming for something cooperative where those robots are a force multiplier, neither a drag on the organization nor a menace to uh, their human counterparts. You know, a lot of the uh, media that gets produced about robots tends to like to pit us against each other, right? People versus machines and robots are going to take over the world. But in reality, right, when you spend time with robots and AI systems, right, they're tools. <laughs> and I think using them to empower people to do better work is a noble goal and one that we're still struggling to try to achieve.